Yeah. He on the gutter, me on the collar? Not against me, you should have played somebody else. <laughs> Shit, bro, just be ready. I'm gonna bring that, I'm gonna bring that trencherous, that treacherous trench baby oh. mentality. Dang. So. Man, my name is Sean Miller. Uh, everybody, a lot of people know me as Sean Deuce, Deuce. Um, uh, alumni, Eleanor Roosevelt, Thousand Point School, four years of varsity. Um, uh, Talk to them people, man. I'm, uh, I'm back now, man. Back now as the head JV coach here, um, working with the faculty and staff at Eleanor Roosevelt High School. Um, it feel good, man, just to be back in this position. Um, it's like the circle of life, man, coming back, giving back to these people. Um, these young people just, you know, investing in them, how a lot of people invested in me um, and the guys around me, man. It just feel good to be right here, right. highlighted on your platform. That's all right. Um, so I'm happy to be in this position, man. That's all right, man. <clears throat> so we're going to get right into it, man. Y'all know who he is. So what are the three most important things to you? Far? It don't have to be just basketball. Just uh, basketball. Absolutely, absolutely, man. First and foremost, man, life itself, man, just, you know, uh, um, just being able to wake up every day, man, just, you know, being able you got, got life in my body, man, being able to be around my family, uh, the people who care about me, man, that's the biggest thing for me. Um, second, man, my children. Uh, my children have changed my perspective of life. Uh, you know, they've helped me become a better man in so many ways. How many children you have? I have three children. Um, I have a, uh, a son and two daughters, uh, Sean, Milan, and Mia. Um, they over here to the left of me uh, with my mother, my stepfather, um, you know. Uh, and, you know, the last thing is, you know, just being able to uh, have my family in general, man, specifically my mother. She has been the rock of our family um, my whole life to this very day. Um, you see she here now. Um, every, every, you know, highlight of my life, the, the, the highs and the lows, she been rocking with me by my side, uh, you know, right or wrong. So, um, you know, uh, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm, I just, you know, I can't stress it enough to say that I'm blessed with, you know, what I got around me, man. So, we're here with Sean's mom, who's also kind of like my mom a little bit, like back then, you know what I'm saying? So, so what was it like raising Sean? Um, Sean was easy. Um, my oldest son was the one that was a trip, but um, raising Sean was easy. Um, Sean listened, he followed the rules, he complied. Um, he loved basketball, so Sean knew if he wanted to be able to do his basketball activities, he had to behave himself. So he was a pretty good kid. Okay. So what was it like with Sean playing basketball at a young age? Did you, did you have expectations for him to play in the NBA, or were you kind of just supporting him through it because that's what he loved to do? Like, were you looking, were you supporting it from a, yeah, my baby wants to lead, like, you know what I'm saying? Or was it just like, yeah, have fun with it, do you, have fun, do you, you know? Um. I supported him in what he wanted. Um, my ultimate goal was for him to get a scholarship to go to college, and he did that. You know, anything after that, you know, it was a blessing. But yeah, ultimately to get some scholarships to go to school. Okay, so how did you how did you feel about the you know if you say Taurus label or something like that? Were you how did you feel about that? Did you want him to continue playing, or did you give him any advice from you know him tearing his label? Well, I wanted him to continue after that, but I also wanted him to, you know, have the surgery and get his shoulder back, you know, in mint condition before he went out to play again. What's your most memorable basketball moment for Sean? Um, one year, Roosevelt won, I think, the semifinals. We were at University of Maryland, uh -huh. and he was so excited, and he was running towards Coach Steve. And Coach Steve picked him up. <laughs> <laughs> so are you the mom that's like, you just sit there and watch him, or you like, you standing up, you cheering, you yelling, shine, shine, and she, like he can hear you in the crowd. Like, what type of mom are you when watching your mom, when watching your son? I'm gonna be totally honest. I'm that <laughs> rowdy mom. Yeah. Like, I'm conservative, but at the same time, I'm supporting all of my team, all of Sean's teammates. If their parents aren't there, I'm there. Yeah. Come on up in here, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, don't be yeah. scared. Hey, yeah. hey, strong. Come on up in here. Don't be scared. What's, going on, What's up, my brothers? How you doing? How you, How you doing, doing, man? I'm doing great. How about yourself? But you, you, you play basketball too? I do not. Huh? I do not. Nah. All right, man. We're here with my guy, Trey. Some of y'all may know him as 2K Trey. Tell them 
what your name is and you know what school you went to. So, quick, quick little background. Quick little background. All right, so about me. So my 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 whole name is Dontre Smith, but like everybody call me Trey, or you can call me Two K Trey. Other than that, I went to Eastern. Um, Eastern Arnold, High School. Yeah, I went to Eastern High School, DC, uh, off of Central Avenue. Okay. Um, well, East Capitol Street. Uh, other than that, uh, I only played two years of organized basketball. I that was see. my 11th grade and 12th grade year. Oh, okay, so you've been street starting. Yeah, I've been a street star. So uh, I've been playing down Bray Farms, Watts, for about, since I was about 14. And I ain't played no organized basketball. I went to Sulean, didn't play. And I went to see Chavez, I didn't play. And then when I went to Easton, that's when I finally started playing basketball, organized my 11th and 12th grade year. Yeah. So after 11 and 12, you ain't, you ain't trying to go to college or nothing? I went to college. I went to FCC. Uh, my first year. You went where? FCC, Frederick Community College. Oh, all right. Yeah, my first year I averaged 18, and then my second year I redshirted. Then I had my daughter, and then I became a full time father. So okay, basically, okay. I was, you know, in the twine of being a dad, trying to stay in school, so I went to PG Community College. Oh, yeah, slow down, but I slow, didn't down finish. slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Dang! <laughs> Dang, that escalated quickly. Right. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, well, damn, y'all already know he got a daughter, same as his opponent. His opponent has three children, so. I'm sure your kid gonna be there watching the game, probably. Most definitely, I'm gonna try to get bring her to this game. She never been to like one of the street games before. Yeah, she I been think to this would be a good one. This would be a good one for her. Nah, most time. definitely. So you already know I'm like one of the best in playing one on one. So yeah. you know I've been doing that all summer for the yeah. past two years. My record is like incredible. So right. I've been doing my thing. So so what what are, what are the uh, what three things are the most important to you? I'm not, I'm sure your daughter is one, but I'm gonna let you go ahead. Three things that's most important to me: my success. And me being happy, my daughter, and my family, okay. like off jump. That's my my best three. I love basketball, but at the end of the day, my family come first, and right. that's what I care about the most. Right. But the best, the most thing I love to doing is playing basketball. And everybody know I play everywhere, so I travel. Right. You know, just want to do. It's the only person I know that walk around in hoop and shoes. Like, talking like he go to the store. <laughs> <laughs> go to the store with hoop and shoes on, like yeah. ready to hoop, like you know what I'm saying? Nah, I'm always ready to hoop. Nah, for real. But so, uh, so tell me about your family growing up. Though I know you said they're, they're the most important. Tell me about, you know. So yeah, I was raised by my mother and my father in the beginning, and then uh, my mother just like took over uh, until I graduated from college. In the beginning, until when? Like, so when my, I was with my dad. I was with my dad, mother, until about the age of four. And then uh, I moved my dad until I was about the age of like nine. And from the age of nine to now, I've been, you know, help build my mom. And basically, as a man now, I just took over, you know, my family as far as paying bills, you know, yeah, make sure yeah, my family yeah. good. So what So what, 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 what? changed when you moved with your dad? Like, what made you want to say, okay, I'm going to just go with my mom from here on out? So my dad wasn't that supportive of me playing basketball. So that's why I wasn't really into getting playing basketball in school. Oh, okay. Makes so sense. I was more so a street baller doing it behind the scenes, like, without yeah, him knowing no type, shit. type shit. So when I, my mother played basketball for Eastern uh, High School when she was in school, so that's what made me go to Eastern. Well, you do know Trey is about to play a one-on-one game, right? What did yes. he tell you? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, how do you feel? I know you haven't seen the other dude play, but do you mm -hmm. feel like the other dude might? Like, how do you, what do you think Trey is going to do? You think he's just going to go out there and win, or you think it's a it's a big game and he might get a little nervous? I'm quite sure he's going to be nervous, but ultimately I want him to have fun. Yeah. You know, Don Trey is a really fun guy, and he, he balls hard. What is your most memorable moment of Trey? <laughs> I was, basketball moment. Basketball, basketball moment. moment. Yeah. He's probably got a lot of those that I had, you know, going to his games. But my most memorable and favorite is the fact that I don't know how he ended up at Eastern High School. Like, and I was my alumni. Yeah. You know, I was a cheerleader for a short period. I was on the dance team, you know. Yeah. So for him to be there, being a basketball player, That's and then good. he was, you know, a yeah, star. Yeah. And he made this shot, and I just heard everybody going, e but you know, that's yeah. that Easter ball. So okay. I just was like this, e like, that's my baby, that's my baby. Stomping, I would be over there like this, and Coach Wright, put him in, put him in, put him in. <laughs> 
I did. He was like, Miss Smith, you are not the coach. You are not the coach. I know how my baby play. <laughs> he could have did that. Yeah. yeah. Nah, those, were, those were memorable moments. We're going to do this. You just dribbling. I'm you right now. When I say same, you see it. When I say left, you pass with your left hand. You hit any double move you want. Gotta be a double move. In, out, in, out, spin. Whatever double move you want, I'm passing it back to you. You're doing the same thing. You got three sets of 30 seconds. Give me a good pass, though. When you lose my semi pro game, we're cussing you up. <laughs> I lose this game because he won. Give me, give me, give me a good pass though. Huh? All right, ready? Let's go. I know some niggas that work out great and don't score with that. I know some niggas that work out great and don't score with that. I mean, I work out great and score with that. You lie, man. You work out great. You stay open. You first hit back out, you ain't hit nothing. Next day, next day. Upside, same thing. What is the so what's what stopped you from what stopped you from actually <clears throat> taking that pro steps or, or did it stop you you just couldn't go like what what was that what was right. the process like she can come yeah she good she good come on let her come to me bring her to me um just to answer pick her up I'm, man pick I'm her asking, up I'm asking. all right pick her up all right come on mama come on all right, all, right, all, right, all right cut it out cut it out jeez okay <laughs> she good now we back we back, man. We back. But anyway, so yeah, like I was saying, so what stopped you from actually going pro? Because a lot of people want to, you know, they play college basketball. They want to go overseas or go to the NBA. What stopped you from doing it? Absolutely, man. Just a little bit about my journey, man. Um, you know, I went to uh, Division One Junior College, Hawkins College, out in the Philly area. Um, you know, I worked my way up and, um, you know, worked my way into the lineup, starting five and um, start to flourish a little bit. Uh, then my journey got altered. My, my oldest child, Sean, was conceived. And, um, and throughout that process, man, my, my journey had you know, shifted a little bit. Um, uh, uh, my focus somewhat shifted as well. Just wanting to, you know, I didn't grow up with my dad. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, and, a lot, man. and it was a, a lot. absolutely, man. There's a lot of uncertainty, but one thing I was for sure certain about that uh, was my jit needed me. I needed to be a, I needed to be a presence in his life. All right, so we're here with Sean's firstborn. Um, I, I'm sure you heard him say, Lord Sean is what they call him. How old are you? Tell him how old you are. Um, I'm eight years old. Okay, so uh, what, what, school, what school do you go to right now? What school I go to right now is, is Arthur Middleton. I've been at Arthur Middleton since kindergarten. Okay, so how you, do, do you play basketball too like your dad? Yes. Did he, did he teach you how to play basketball? Yes. How was it? How was it when he was teaching you? Like, was he was he pushing you? Was he hard on you? Did he teach you any type of new move that you can't forget? Or like, what is something special it that your dad taught you? Well, what he taught me special was really nothing. It just gave me a chance to to increase my skills. Increase your skills? Okay. So, how do you, how do you see your dad on the court? Like, what do, you, do you do you think you beat him one on one? No, oh, not yet. Not yet. When do you think you're gonna be able to beat him? Like when I turn like 13. 13? Oh, wait a minute. That's in, that's in. So you eight. That's what? Five years? That's six years from now. Five years from now. So you're going to beat him in five years? You know that for a fact? Yes. That's all right. Confidence. I see you get that from You get that from your dad. That's all right, man. So you heard it here first, man. We might have another matchup after this one. <laughs> Lord Sean versus Big Sean. It's up, man. Your dad, though, you said he he didn't want you to play basketball. Was he just like, like what what what, did, what made him not like basketball for you? On a personal reason, my uh my father is like a scholar, so oh, okay. you know what I'm saying. He's very successful type. Like he he got the bag basically. He uh, he worked for the Department of Education at a high level. So okay, okay. 
But uh, so his goal for you was like, look, man, focus on your education. Man, I I used to get into it with him badly to the mm-hmm. point that you know police got involved because he didn't want me to be so focused on sports and he wanted me to be into school. Was it that you just abandoned school and was only doing basketball though? Or nah, it's just that you know as a as a child when you got like a 2.0 or you you made it to be able to play basketball you get excited when your your parent wants you to succeed and have a 4.0 so you did enough to get back to be able to do what you wanted to do so that's what i was doing i did enough to get to where i wanted to be which is to play basketball yeah and he didn't accept that so if it wasn't a 3.0 better he wasn't gonna let me play yeah so at the end of the day my mom was more lenient when it came to me making a 2.0 better for me to be able to play so that's how that that's how that came about so so what what's stopping you now from i know you say you played you did you played at uh frederick community college right and then you had a uh you had a daughter Boom, was, was that your first year your freshman year in college yeah yeah that was my no yeah that was my second year in college so. second year so you were a sophomore basically basically yeah and then so you had your daughter mm-hmm. and then you took a break from hooping or I know you said you went to PG. A lot of stuff happened between my daughter and you know her mom. So uh, my daughter was in the hospital when she was one. Mm. She had like five broken ribs in her back. Yeah, and a punched the liver. And it came from, you know, my baby mom's boyfriend. So I had to step up and take full custody, go to court. And I've been a full-time father and full custody of my child since she was one. Oh, so that's my not your birth child though. Oh, it is. No, that is. Wait, you said her, her boyfriend, uh-huh. hurt my child. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay, okay. So, Dang. I got full custody. Had full custody since she was one. She's nine now, and you can see she healthy, tall. She yeah. into ballet, sports, yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, she look she little goofy for basketball right now, but yeah, I'm gonna yeah. get her there. Everybody, I mean, everybody don't gotta play basketball. Yeah, nah, not just you know. something you throw at them if they like it, they like it. Yeah, but yeah. Dang, that's crazy though, man. What he doing? I mean. I'm gonna get yeah. too deep in it, but you beating a one year old with. Yeah, hey, uh, so CPS basically, uh, Child Protective Service got involved, went to both our houses, seen the living conditions. I live in a better co- living condition than she, wa- she was at the mm-hmm. time. So they did some investigations. They said that the ri- broken ribs had to come from either the, her getting in a car accident or somebody striking her. So one of her family members secretly talked to CPS and was like, you know, um, I-, I heard one day of him doing something. And it was in the time frame of her injuries, so basically I won that full custody battle so quick. Mm. So she's Dang. still with the dude, and she got a baby by the dude, and the baby is due on my birthday. Mm. That's crazy. Crazy. That's crazy. Karma. All right, so I'm here with Trey's grandfather, 2K Trey. Um, so let's start off. So we'll tell him your name. My name is James Alvin Smith. Okay. I'm from West Virginia, but I live here in uh, Maryland right now, Hatchville. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm comfortable. And I like it. You say you are comfortable? And you like it? I'm comfortable. Did yeah. you did you did you grow did you grow up here? Did I grow? Up? Did you grow up in Maryland? Oh. I grew up in West Virginia. Okay. And uh, when I was 19, I uh, went in the military. Okay. And I stayed in the military uh, two years. They did two years in Vietnam, and I got hurt. Mm. And when I got hurt. They put me in the hospital at Walter Reed. And that's how I end up in Merrill. Oh, okay. Okay. And they when when they brought me back on the airplane, my leg was broke up. I had a hole in here mm. and a hole in my chest right there. And uh when they brought me back to the hospital, they took me to Walter Reed. Fact. Yeah. Um so so uh let's 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 get in the tray though. So did you know they call him two K Trey? Do what now? Did you know they call your grandson two K Trey? Yeah, I've heard that before, but yeah. I didn't, I, you know, I didn't pay too much attention to it. They tend to uh, get to hook up with each other, like each other, and they're really buddies. They give each other nicknames and yeah, stuff okay, like that. Yeah, okay, yeah, so, yeah. So, so you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You know. Okay. But still, me, that's my Don Trey right there. I got that. What you call him? Don Trey. Don Trey. Don Trey. Okay. That's my Don Trey. That's your Don Trey. Ain't nobody else got no Don Trey. Yeah. So, I got a Don Trey. <laughs> <laughs> so, so growing up, though, did you, did you, did you know that Trey... Dontre had um, basketball skills that could take him, you know, to yeah, where he is now. Yeah, I knew that. I've known that since he was a little kid. Mm. That was his thing. The basketball, nothing else has ever been in his mind mm. or in his heart. Mm. 
I mean, uh, when he was a little kid, he carried his basketball or rolled that basketball around. That was his heart. Mm. That's who he was. And anybody that know him right now has, that has known him way back, even when he was young, basketball. Basketball. That's, that's all you know about basketball. That's him. That's yeah. his mind. That's his heart. And if you get in the way of that, you're going to have a problem. Mm. That's deep. That's you're going to have a problem. So, so at, uh, we're going to wrap it up soon. But so as of, as of now, do you think that Trey belongs? Like, where do you think Trey belongs as far as basketball? You think he need to be playing on TV somewhere? You think he need to be? Well, I have always told him, follow your heart. Mm. Follow your mind. You want to play basketball? Don't let nobody or anything take away from you what you want. Mm. Find out in your mind and in your heart what it needs for you to accomplish what you're trying to do. If it's basketball, you want to do it, you got you to practice, you got to train, you got to be there, you got to play in the right place with the right people to be seen, to be caught. You know, talk, go talk to coaches mm -hmm. from other schools. From other uh, uh, people who hire uh, teams, yeah, yeah, yeah. big teams, other teams, go talk to the coaches. Surround talk, yourself with. Yeah, yeah. You gotta surround the, the things that you need to accomplish. What you want to do. Yeah. Um, I got I got a new job. I better myself. I was working with the government at first with DPR. Now I work for a company called William Scott. I'm making over sixty thousand. Not gonna go to the exact price, but I make over sixty thousand, and I'm like doing better. Yeah. I'm in a better position. Yeah. Please. Nah, that's all right. So, um, as far as you know, I ain't trying to. We gonna we gonna move on from this in a minute. But as far as your your baby mother though, so like, is she still helping raise your daughter, or is it just like? Nah? Oh yeah, no. Nah, from the age of um to the age of about three, she didn't see her for real. And then when she showed up, my daughter wasn't too familiar with her, so she'd cry all the time. But since then, I can say now she's probably one of the best mother figures. Like she be in her daughter life. Like yeah. me and her got a agreement as far as co-parenting. Yeah. She she come over here and she chill. She chill with her daughter. She take her places. And um, my daughter really love her. And then my daughter is old enough now to go over there and you know communicate and talk about yeah. what's going on. Yeah. So even when she see him, she could voice to me and she could call me and let me know what's going on. Is your so, was your daughter aware of like? I'm sure she was aware of her broken ribs, but does she know like? the situation that she was in when all that happened like did i don't you tell think, her anything about it i don't think she remember and and she don't have any scars or injuries like to to make her think that that happened when she was younger all oh, okay. she know is that you know a situation happened when she was in the hospital yeah, yeah. When so she, she wasn't really, feeling good she, okay so she don't really know it so what made you go to pg though I went to PG because I was trying to, you know, have, have her for a time and then I was trying to go oh, to, to get school. closer to her. Yeah, I okay. was trying to be here, go to PG and, okay. and but it wasn't working because it was too much of an effort of being a full time dad. Yeah. And then trying to do school at the same time. And then trying to play basketball on the work schedule when I had her by myself, it was just me and my mom. So Yeah. So did you so so what was the final judgment you just fine. like all right i'm done I'm with just, basketball i'm done with school basketball at least i mean i stayed yeah school basketball i was done i just stayed in shape and more so likely i just played like semi-pro and stuff like okay. that you know what i'm saying like right now i'm playing semi-pro uh with pg valor and i played with in the ttbl league with the bucks so and then i started traveling doing the youtube thing and yeah, as far yeah. as like making money so Man, and other it was than just that, kinda just in your own hand. You ain't really trying to. So, so what stopping you from taking the next step to actually be a pro? Or are you still? Actually, what stopping me was making a film. So I've been making film, and, and since because of COVID happened, it was no school film for me to even give them. So, and I can't give them streetball film. So I started this semi-pro stuff, and, okay. and now I make the film. So I recently, in my first game opener, I had two overseas scouts there. And I, I, I scored 18, I scored 15 in the fourth quarter. I actually had a bad whole first three quarters. I scored 15 in the first quarter. I mean, in the fourth quarter. And we lost by three because of, you know, bad situations. I mean, just, I mean IQ, let me say that. Bad teammates. I ain't gonna say no names if you watch a nail. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, other than that, though, uh, I'm definitely trying to take it to the next step because my daughter's older now and I got a lot more support than what I did when I first started. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you wouldn't, I know you see you just got a job or whatever and you know, you're doing well for yourself. Mm -hmm. So I'm an over, I'm, I'm an agent or I'm a coach, whatever you want to call me. Mm -hmm. Trey, I got a deal for you, man. We can only do 30,000 right now. I know you're making around 60. 
can you can you take this right now or you want to stick to making your money well i could i, I would take it because i could work i could keep my job because my job is i can work at home so i can take my computer wherever i want to go i can log out and log in whenever because there's nothing but uh transportation coordinator so <laughs> Oh, so we looking at about a good yeah. 90. Oh, okay. Add it to the, add it to the salary. Are we <laughs> nah, in that's there. That's all right. That's all right. All right. So for any hoopers growing up, I know you had like a rough, you know, your dad didn't want to let you play. You you had to move with your mom to make sure you was on the basketball court, this and that. So what would you tell to any young hoopers that, that could be in your position or, you know, that's just trying to start hooping? So I love talking and giving back. So basically what i tell kids is like don't be in a rush to grow up like mm -hmm. don't be in a rush to make bad decisions like mm -hmm. them girls are always going to be there the mm -hmm. people that want to stop you from doing what you love doing will always be there mm -hmm. you will not be able to play basketball That's forever can you repeat that to the camera please what that the people that the people that uh oh oh so so you go, whatever you just so said. girls are always going to be there and the people that want you to go out and distract you will always be there. The people that don't want you to succeed will always be there. So focus on your dream. Like if you want to play basketball, make that your full time commitment job. Like I focus on it. I wish I did that to the point that I shut a lot of people out because when I made it, the same people that was there when I was trying to make it is going to be there. Like, and then you're going to meet so many different connections and people that's doing better or even trying to reach the same goal you're trying to reach. Yeah. Those are the people you need to connect with, not the people that's trying to distract you. Yeah. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Ah! Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Middle, 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 middle. Uh, and I didn't know until after the season that I actually severely torn my labrum. Mm. Uh, and throughout that, you know, that year of, uh, from surgery to physical therapy, um, I had, you know, been working at that point, finishing yeah. school at that point. Yeah. And once I was able to, you know, look at like I can provide a little bit more for my kid and I can be a little bit more present for my kid, yeah. I wasn't really willing to take that sacrifice at that point. And, and understanding how much time I had already spent away from my son exactly. and just wanting to, you know, wanting to raise my kid, man. Yeah. Like, you know, so at times, you know, I go back and forth and think about like I never pursued my dream or whatever the case may be. But, um, you know, I feel like they're worth it. And, um, you know, and, and that's I want you to understand, bro. That's why this means a lot to me to be able to be highlighted on your platform, bro. That, you know, uh, absolutely, bro. Absolutely, bro. Just to be able to, you know, give it one more shot, man, to go play against another, you know, good, tough competitor. Go out and, you know, prove to not only, uh, you know, myself, but just to, just to show my kids, man, just never give up on your dreams, man. Give it, you know what I mean? It could be in so many different ways, but, you know, you can still chase and go after what you love in whatever aspect it may be. And so this is why it means so much to me on this day to have my kids and, you know, it ain't always easy, like, you know what I mean? Uh, but, you know, you give it what you can, you give it what you got, and I think that they appreciate that at the end of the day. Now you can show them, like, man, look, I'm better than a lot of you. <laughs> <laughs> Only reason I ain't doing it is because I had to, you know, he had to take care of his jets. So it gets bigger than, it gets bigger than what y'all think. But nah, yeah, that's all right, though. So, so for any kind of hoopers looking up to you, what would you say to them on their journey as far as, you know, growing up, <clears throat> college basketball, high school basketball, chasing that dream? Stay the course, man. Stay the course. Uh, it's, it's so many things out here, man, that if your mind is not strong, that could break you, man, from, from being coached too hard and you not knowing how to handle that, not being secure within yourself mm. or not being able to, you know, not being around the right people that's, you know, like-minded individuals that, you know, that's going to stir you. And you might not be the person that's going to say, I'm going to go shoot 100 shots at 5 a.m. But you around the, you around the bam of that whip, that is going to highlight that. And then yeah. that'll be like, okay, I right, bet I'm with that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Opposed to being around people who going to influence you to do something dumb or something that could, you know, potentially be detrimental to your future. Um, 
you know what I mean? Last thing, but you know, last thing I would say is just be confident in yourself, man. It's, it's everything is within you, man. Anything that you want to do, you can do it. Literally, it's all about how you apply yourself, the discipline that you put behind it, and what you really want. Yeah. And I think that if you if you can really apply those type of things, man, it's nothing but positivity. It may not go how you see it, but it's nothing but positivity that can come out of that, man. At the end of the day. So what? Uh, how did you get started, and what made you start playing basketball? How was, how was you introduced to basketball? Um, even how I just highlighted my brother on FaceTime a couple minutes ago when we were still in the gym. Uh, my older brother, Chris. Um, I'd have never touched a basketball too well for this man right here. Yeah, that's my brother. That's my big brother. Say what's up to the people. Yeah. Big shout out. Big money. He kind of forced it on me originally. Uh, you know, just, you know, at times where we just out of the court, um, we, you know, we was raised up in um, Spring Hill Lake for the better of my younger years. Um, and he'd just have us under the lights late at night, man, just me and him uh, push me. And, you know, sometimes I'm going to walk off or quit and uh, like, what you going to do? You going to get mommy? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and, and, and really he was that guy, man, just pushing me and, and installed that initial work ethic within me, that, that mental toughness, you know what I mean, from just work, running around that late. And you know what I mean, being able to pop the lights on, so we out there extended hours, and you know him introducing me to the triple threat. Even to this day, man, that's the first thing I teach kids when I train kids or my athletes. Triple threat, man, that's the first thing I ever learned. And you know what I mean, I was able to, and whatever the journey of anything, any accolades that I got here and any other place, I always speak and show that gratitude to my brother because uh, you know he didn't have what he provided for me. He didn't have that for him, and you know what I mean. That also gave me the you know the know-how on how to go about being a father watching yeah. my brother so yeah. you know what i mean um i definitely always get that kudos to my brother um chris man for sure shout out to you bro yeah that's all right shout out to chris man so <laughs> that triple threat <laughs> so you know that's kind of that's how you start with this one-on-one -on -one. You know, <laughs> for the sure first thing you check for, up for, this triple threat for sure so have you seen your matchup play uh, once, man, we played against each other up at up at your church okay. in the trenches, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know what I mean. Uh, we went back and forth, traded a couple buckets. So, you know, I definitely know Bro could go for sure. Have you seen him play one on one though? Uh, nah, nah, okay. so, nah. So, so, so how you how you feeling though? Are you feeling like this gonna be a good matchup, or are you feeling like, man, he can't mark, he can't mess with me for real, like? Cause you know sometimes you, you you don't even have to see people play. For sure. You just know, like, For sure. man, I'm not losing to him. For sure. So is it is it is it is it that type of energy or are you just kind of like, eh, it's gonna be a good game. I got, I'm gonna see. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I'm definitely I'm definitely putting my my house, my car, my money all on me. But at the end of the day, uh, you know I know it's gonna be a good matchup. I know, I, like I say, I know he could go. But at yeah. the end of the day, you know I like my chances with myself. Yeah. Now, nah, as you said, um, I know you talked about your triple threat moves, or you, you know you're you're, you're fishing in a triple threat. So with three dribbles, you know that's a different ball game. Absolutely. So, <laughs> so like explain your game in three dribbles. Like you feel like, like how, explain your game in three dribbles. Just leave it at that. I feel like most people who already know me know I have a very simple game. I have a very fundamental type skill set. Um, very versatile basketball player. Yeah. So with that being said, I feel like the the with it being three dribbles that that plays into my favor, in my opinion, just with the simple fact that I'm not I'm not heavy on dribbling. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm a straight direct to it. I'm a yeah. woo woo, and I'm a you know I'm gonna go get to <laughs> straight it. Straight to it. So uh, you understand me? You know, I ain't, it's not too much flash and and, yeah. and uh, you yeah. know. Finesse in my game. Yeah, I'm real. Yeah. I'm real. You know, like I say, I'm a real fundamentally sound type of basketball player. So I'm gonna stick to my fundamentals. I'm gonna stick to. I'm gonna stay true to my game. I'm not gonna try to get out my character and try to, you know, uh, you know, try to impress nobody. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna stay to my game and I'm gonna stick to what I do. Yeah. And um, and that's what's gonna work for me. End of the day, man. The object of the game is to put the ball in the basket. You heard it here, man. He a thousand point score. So clearly he knows how to put the ball in the basket. So you do know this one-on-one -on -one is, is nowhere near organized gym basketball. Absolutely. It's, it's in the gym. It's going to be gritty. It is giving you that trenchy feel. Though. For sure, for sure, so, you for know. sure. But I feel like anybody who know me, whoever played within me, uh, played around me or seen me play, they know I come with a certain grit. I come with a certain aggression. I come with a certain passion when I play the game. Yeah. Um, everybody know I'm a, I'm a raw. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a bring a physicality and you know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a bring my best. 
Uh, you know what I mean? That's for sure, bro. That's all right, that's, that's all right, man. That's all right, man. Here you have it, man. Sean Miller. Any last words for your opponent? <laughs> Shit, bro. Just be ready. I'm gonna bring that. I'm gonna bring that treacherous, that treacherous trench baby oh. mentality. Dang so, it. That's a bar. Just be ready. Oh, oh, what? You gonna bring that what? That treacherous trench baby mentality. Hey, that might have to go on his shirt. <laughs> treacherous trench baby. Have you seen your matchup play? I seen him play. Um, I don't think he could beat me, no. But Man, I ain't even asked you that. It so don't you, matter. Oh, okay. So, so. it don't matter. <laughs> it don't matter. <laughs> it don't matter, bro. So, so you don't think you don't think he could beat you at all? It's nah, no I don't. So I you mean I playing three games? That's cool. Okay. So out of three games, how many games you think you gonna win? Cause you know it's a three game series, right? Three. You gonna win three games? Three. Cause I already know he gonna be mad and salty for the first two. He gonna want that. That salty rematch, so yeah, three. And you gonna give him the salty rematch? Yeah, you gonna take it to a lead? Yeah, we might gotta put a wage on that street bar, ain't it? Oh, yeah, all right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. All right, you heard it here. You heard what he said, Sean. You heard what he said. He gonna beat you three times. Dang. I don't even know why you put him on the car, yeah. Yeah, oh, you said what? I don't even know why you put him on the car. Well, he don't deserve to be on the car? Not against me. He should have played somebody else. (laughs) I'm just saying. Oh yeah, it's getting spicy. Okay, well, yeah, you heard him. He, he said you're not worthy enough to be in his on the court with him, man. You know what I'm saying? So that's what that's what it is. So, um, so why you think your matchup can't beat you though? Like, what, what's what's why you so like? I'm beating him three times. I don't care. You only seen him play once, right? It don't matter. That three dribble game, that one on one shit, that's my shit. Mm. And you don't think he has no chance for him? He got a chance to score. Not to win. Not the one. Sheesh. That's all right. So what do you think you need to work on the most as far as your game? As far as my game working on the most, probably, probably let me say, passing the ball. I could agree on that. All right, that's so all I'm saying. We're going to leave it right there. Yeah. Psych, nah, that's <laughs> <laughs> nah, so, all right. Um, so nah. last, last question. So three, it's three dribbles. I'm sure you know that. And like you said, three dribbles is your game. So what makes three dribbles... Like what makes it your game? Like what makes that? I don't uh, need three your dribbles. Favorite? You don't need three dribbles. I don't need three dribbles. So how many dribbles do you think you need to score on a good defender? Great defender. You can score on a great defender off the jet. Mm. So that's I got a great jet. I got a great pivot game. He said, I ain't gonna lie. He said he grew up playing out of the uh, triple threat, so he's mighty effective in that triple threat position. So you gonna have to guard too. He gonna have to be a shooter. Cause at the end of the day, if you ain't hitting from that, I ain't worried about that shit. All right, so it sounds good, saying. man. Sound good, man. Y'all be ready. We're not going to get y'all a date yet, but we got 2K Trey, man. Um, any last words you want to say? Nah, I can't wait till this shit happen because I've been geeking for this shit. I've been blowing your DM up about this shit, so yeah. <laughs> Let's get to it, man. 2K Trey, DMV Street Stars. We gone. Yes, sir.